Hello guys, today we're going to build and simulate a linear voltage regulator using the LM7805. We're going to do multi-sim live simulation and actual hardware testing. So let's first go to the simulation. So as you can see, I have the voltage regulator in my screen. Now I have, I chose a capacitor. I'm going to change it to 100 microfarads. I copy the capacitor and it's C2. So you have two capacitors. Now I select one kilo ohm resistor and a DC voltage source. I connect the capacitor as you can see. To the source and the source connected to the regulator. Now the negative of the source goes like this. I connect the source and that capacitor in parallel. The voltage regulator goes to the ground. That's the middle leg. And the resistor is in parallel with C2. I'm going to plug in the ground right there. The green probe that I just selected is going to measure the potential difference from the output to the ground. At this probe, this blue probe is measuring the current. This is output current. So I'm going to put the name I out because it's output current and this purple probe is measuring the input current so I'm going to change the name to I in now the circuit is ready I'm going to show the results that I got for the output voltage when I change the input from 0 volts to 10 volts increasing the potential difference 1 volt by 1 volt so let's see and let's keep in mind that this voltage regulator has a regulated output voltage of 5 volts. That means that we expect to get a 5 volts potential difference from the output to the ground. The table that you see in this picture was borrowed from the Farshild Semiconductors Corporation. And we can see that the dropout voltage for this specific model is 2 volts. Let's keep this in mind. Let's review the simulation results one by one. When the input is 0 volts, we can see that the output is 92.6 nanovolts. So that means that the output is basically 0. The circuit has no input. When the input is 1 volt, we also get a negligible output. For input equal to 2 volts, we get almost 0.6 volts. When input is 3 volts, we get 1.56 volts. But this is far away from the 5 volts that we expect because this regulator is supposed to provide 5 volts at the output so even though we applied 3 volts to the input we still get 1.56 volts that's below what we expect when the input is 4 volts we get 2.5 volts at the output when the input is 5 volts we get 3.5 volts at the output so we're increasing but still not in 5 when the input voltage is 6 volts, we get to 4.5 almost. We are getting closer. And finally, when the input is 7 volts, we get that the output is 5 volts. So we get to the regulated voltage that we expect from this device. Let's see what happens if we increase one more volt. When the input voltage is 8 volts, we still get a 5 volts output. When it's 9 volts, we see that we get, again, 5 volts at the output. When the input voltage is 10 volts, again, 5 volts. I'm going to plug in higher, let's see 50 volts, what happened? You see, 5 volts again, at the output. Let's see what happens if I plug in 100 volts. Again, the output will be 5 volts. But be careful, because in real life, if you plug in this and the potential difference is very high, with respect to the regulated output, the device is going to dissipate a lot of power and this is going to be very hot. So you may install a heatsink to cool it down. 
otherwise it is going to melt the breadboard or even catch fire, so be careful. We got from simulation results that for input equal to 0 volts, output is negligible, as we see from this graph, when the input voltage increases, the output voltage increases to a point where it stabilizes at 5 volts, that is a regulated voltage. You see that there is arrow at 7 volts, because at 7 volts was the first time that the output got to the regulated voltage, that's 5. That means that 7 volts is the minimum input voltage for this device to work properly. We saw from the device specifications that the dropout voltage is 2 volts. That means that if the regulated voltage is 5, we have to add 2 volts of the dropout voltage to get the minimum input that we must apply. Ok guys, so now that we analyzed the simulation, let's go to the hands-on experiment. I am going to use 1 kilo ohms resistor, two 100 microfarads electrolytic capacitors, and one LM7805 voltage regulator. You can see from this picture that the middle pin is the ground, the left is the input, and the right is the output. I'm going to build the circuit as follows. It is very important to connect it correctly. So you see that I'm going to insert the voltage regulator in the breadboard as follows. The middle leg goes to the ground. This black cable is going to connect the middle leg to the ground. I'm going to use the whole blue line as ground. Then I'm going to connect the electrolytic capacitors. So it is important to connect the positive. Long leg is positive. So the positive leg goes to the input and the short leg goes to the ground. So this long leg is going to the input. It is going to the input and the short leg is going to the ground, as I'm showing in here. I'm going to connect the other capacitor to the output. So the long leg goes to the output, meanwhile the short leg goes to the ground. I'm going to connect this resistor to the ground and to the output. So this leg, this pin goes to the ground of the resistor, and the other leg goes to the output. So we can see that the one of the electrolytic capacitors is connected in parallel with the resistor. This is one kilo ohm. So I'm going to connect this red cable to the input. So this cable is going to transfer the input signal to the voltage regulator and I'm going to make this red aisle as input and the blue aisle is going to be ground. So you see that anything that I connect to this plus red aisle is going to be input and goes to the input in the regulator. Because I don't have a DC source generator, I'm going to use batteries as an input for this experiment. We need to measure the potential difference from the ground to the output of the linear voltage regulator. So this is going to be the ground and this red wire is going to measure the output voltage with respect to the ground. These are my multimeter probes. I am going to turn on into DC voltage. And I'm going to connect the red probe of the multimeter to the output of the linear voltage regulator. And let's connect the black probe of the multimeter to the ground. So I'm going to measure the potential difference from the ground to the output of the linear voltage regulator. So these two probes are connected as shown to the ground and to the output. Because I don't have a DC power supply, I'm going to use batteries to plug in into the input. So this red cable 
is going to be the input and it's going to transfer like this to the input of the voltage regulator and the black cable is the ground so let's see what happens when I connect as shown we see that we don't have any output it's really low so I'm going to have nothing it's really low now I'm going to use a 9 volts battery let me measure so I'm unplug the circuit and I'm going to use the same multimeter to measure how much is the potential difference across this battery and we see that we have around 8.7 volts let's see what happens if I connect it I'm going back to plug in the multimeter across the ground and the output remember this is ground and the red cable is showing me the potential difference across the ground and the output let's connect this or you see now that I connect the 8 point volts to the circuit I got 5.36 almost 5 the reason why is because this is an L7805 this is going to regulate to 5 volts so let's use a higher voltage so I'm going to connect these batteries in series to have a higher potential difference so now let's take the multimeter and measure this is going to the plus and this is going to the minus and we get 11.85 volts of potential difference let's apply this potential difference to the circuit so black cable goes back to the circuit and the red cable is going to measure the potential difference from the ground to the output of the voltage regulator let me connect the ground negative and let's connect the positive to the input and we can see that we have 5 volts as expected even though we connected a higher potential difference input we continue to have 5 volts at the output of the voltage regulator with respect to the ground we have the same 5 volts now let's connect an even higher potential difference I'm going to use this white alligator cable to connect in series one additional voltage source so now let's measure the potential difference across my new source using the multimeter and we see that now we have 16.6 volts so I'm going to apply an input of 16.6 volts to the voltage regulator now let me go back the multimeter is going to be plugging to the circuit so this is going to the output and the multimeter is going to measure again let me remind from the ground to the output of the voltage regulator now let me apply these 16 volts that we just measured this goes to the ground this is the minus of the voltage source and this is going to the plus so this is the 16 volts input and as we can see even though that we apply a higher input this time we get the same 5 volts this happens because this circuit is a voltage regulator whatever we apply to the input is going to regulate to 5 volts because this is an LM7805 so I'm going back to use one battery to see what happened this is 1.5 volts let me double check how much this is providing us and we see from the multimeter that this battery is providing us with 1.5 volts let me connect this to the ground of the circuit and this red goes back let me remind you to the output 
Let's see what happens if I connect these 1.5 volts. Nothing happens, you see? Because uh, the voltage regulator needs a minimum input to provide the regulated 5 volts. So normally, there is a B-drop, the dropout voltage. So for example, if this regulator provides 5 volts, that means that I have to provide an input that's the same 5 volts plus the dropout voltage. But if I apply a higher voltage, you see, it's working. Let me take out one battery more. I'm going to take out from this connection one battery. And now I only have these two batteries connected in series. Let's see if it works. And it didn't get to the regulated voltage. You see, it is lower because although we get close to the optimal potential difference, it is not enough. So I assume that what I'm going to measure across this potential difference is not going to be 7. This, this has to be less than 7. And you see, we got 6.2 volts across these batteries. These two batteries provide me 6.2 volts. Is not 7 volts. You see guys? Let's remember from simulations that 7 volts is the minimum input that we have to apply in order to get the regulated output voltage. Any input below 7 volts will give a lower output voltage. But any input equal or larger than 7 volts will provide the regulated output voltage that is 5 volts. So let's back to the circuit and connect a higher voltage source let's say an 8.8 volts. So you see that this one is around 8.8 volts. So this should be enough to get to the five volts regulated voltage. This should be enough. So let me connect back to the circuit guys. Let me remind you because we want to know exactly what I am measuring. I get back to the, to the circuit and this should be enough to get the 5 volts. And yes guys, we get 5 volts regulated because this source is enough. Okay guys, I hope that you enjoyed this video. Remember to give me a thumbs up, share it with your friends, your geek friends, your girlfriends and anyone who likes electronics and experiments and things like that. Thank you guys, I'll see you the next time.